Allah upon his higher spiritual emotion that is called love. And this is, yeah, sure. It's one thing someone says, I'm imitating the Prophet Sallallahu But if that imitation of the Rasul is not in, is not what um, underpinned by love of the Prophet Sallallahu that imitation is superficial. It's superficial and it's rejected by the Lord Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And so thereby to become sincere in our imitation, we must become sincere in our love of the Prophet Sallallahu And that there becomes the ruh. It becomes the life force and the spirit of everything that has to do with the religion. A love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallama. To the point of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallama, Al-An, Ya Umar, now, O oh Umar, that you love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi more than everything. And it's not just a word. You love the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi more than everything and anything and anyone. You love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahihi wa sallam. Like note, you're going to say, well, not more than any except Allah. A khata' there. Because love of the Rasul is love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not going to differentiate there. Love of Allah ta'ala is, is love of the Rasul. You're not going to differentiate. Yeah. Pleasing Allah ta'ala is pleasing the Rasul. You're not going to differentiate. Pleasing the Rasul is pleasing Allah. You are simply not going to differentiate. And obeying God is obeying the Rasul. You're not going to differentiate. Obeying the Rasul is obeying Allah Ta'ala. You are not going to differentiate. How are you going to differentiate when Allah Ta'ala himself doesn't differentiate? Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Allah wa Rasulu. Haqqan yurdu. Allah Ta'ala says. Allah and his messenger. They. Allah and his messenger. Have the right that you please him. Like Allah says. Allah Ta'ala says Allah and his Rasul. Have the right that you please them. But Allah Ta'ala joined between himself and his Rasul in a singular pronoun. Allah and his Rasul have the right that you please him. Hakadri says. And so there's no differentiation. You farraq bain Allah wa Rasul. You're not going to differentiate it. Okay? And so thereby we endeavor and the life, the life, mashallah ta'ala, spirit. MashaAllah Ta'ala is love of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Remember love, which is where we sort of arrive at, quote unquote, is informed by knowledge. You love whom you know. Yeah, and if love of the one you're ignorant of is but a claim, yeah, it's but a claim. Bereft of proof, yeah, proof of life, proof of love. And your proof of love is proportional, quote unquote, to your knowledge of the beloved. And so it's always important when we hear the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa qul, Rabbi zidni ilma, say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Knowledge of whom? My Lord, increase me in knowledge of Allah. And in knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're increasing the knowledge of the Rasul. My Lord, increase me in knowledge of the Rasul. And in knowledge of the Rasul, you're increasing the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Ta'ala commanded us with that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقُلْ رَبِّي زِدْنِي عِلْمًا Say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. And so we merely comply, because that's all it is. Okay, who are Rabb? He's the Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. نَحْنُ عَبِيدُهُ We're his slave, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the slave, dutiful, complies with the commandment of the Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so thereby we expose ourselves to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is good. Pleasure by exposing ourselves to the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah ta'ala loves it, yani. subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala loves it when all eyes are upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He loves it. When you turn your attention towards the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam and the winds facilitate that. You know, the wind, especially when the winds are strong, you, go to go, you can't go against the wind, isn't it? It will push you in a direction. And inside the Rabi'il Awa, the strength of these winds, they push you in the direction of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Alaihi wa Sahih wa Sallam. Islam, just submit, yani. don't fight it. Just submit, isn't it? And go with the flow. And everything will flow towards him, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sahih wa Sallam. Those, MashaAllah, Ta'ala, the blessed, inshallah, we continue our reading that we began last year. Our Master Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi wa is sublime character and exalted attributes. The Imam Abdullah Sarajuddin al-Husayni rahimahullah ta'ala. 
MashaAllah Ta'ala, from the blessed Sulala, from the blessed progeny of the Prophet Sallallahu of the offspring of Sayyidina Hussein, Radiallahu Ta'ala, Yani Anhu, Yani Ardahu. He's the one now, it's going to be the facilitator for us, inshallah ta'ala, to increase in knowledge and thereby increase in love and thereby increase in emulation and in imitation, inshallah ta'ala, the Imam Rahim Allah ta'ala, you know, the last of the truly greats of the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a lot of people, but from amongst the people of Allah ta'ala, they're the people who are giants, yani. You get the point, giants. Allah Ta'ala has a lot of knowers, but amongst the knowers of Allah Ta'ala, there are people who are just giants, yani. they're giants in that. And this Imam Abdullah Saraj al-Din, he's the last of a kind, yani. giant yani, in the truest sense of the word. Like, it's not going to be some that's subject to opinion. But the same people, they're not subject to opinion. You know who they are, you say, that's a giant in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You say, that's a true inheritor. Of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahibi Wa Sallama, MashaAllah Ta'ala, Shaykh Abdullah Saraj Uddin, and Radi Allah Ta'ala, and Anhu, and Wa Ardahu, in his book, Our Master Muhammad, Sayyiduna Muhammad, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahibi Wa Sallama, inshaAllah Ta'ala. There'll be a short session today, inshaAllah Ta'ala, to initiate the reading, inshaAllah Ta'ala, and we'll continue, inshaAllah Ta'ala, bi idhnillah by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll pray it always, because you know, you begin, you, do, you know not if you're going to end, isn't it? But who cares? As long as you die upon his name, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are good at it. Who cares? Allah ta'ala snatches in the midst of a reading of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because what else could we ever wish for? What else, mashallah, could we ever desire? Like many of us, we studied the great Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, he died with Bukhari upon his chest, isn't it? He died in the midst of reading Kalam Nabi Allah, Kalam Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahibi Sallam, Ya Bakhtukum Ya Aba Hamid, Al Ghazali Rahimullah Ta'ala. He mentions Rahimullah Ta'ala, Sayyidina Muhammad, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam, our Master Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, his sublime character and exalted attributes. In volume two, author Imam Abdullah Sarah Jadeen al Husseini, Radiallahu Ta'ala, Anhu Wardahu, part one, the exemplary ethics of our Master Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, his great shyness, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sahih wa Sallam, his shyness in the Arabic language, Haya, they speak of the shyness or the modesty okay, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sahih wa Sallam, and that the attribute is of the most important attributes in quote the prophetic repertoire of all attributes is the attribute of modesty and shyness. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam inside of Sahih, inside of the Sunnah of Imam Tirmidhi, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Inna li kulli deen in khuluq. That every deen, religion, way, has a khuluq, it has a trait. Wa khuluq al-Islam al-Haya. And the khuluq of Islam, this manifestation of the Rasul al-Haya, is shyness, bashfulness, modesty. And so thereby the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, al awfar, wa hadd al asli. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has a profound amount of shyness, modesty, and it is the basis from which all modesty appears. Okay, it's the sh sh shyness and the modesty of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just like quote unquote, us, in order to enter into the good favor of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala eternally. Now, modesty is what, I'm gonna use the word here, when he translates that shyness, what is inseparable, it's lazim, it's necessary. That's so why the Prophet says inside of Sahih al-Bukhari, he mentions us that, that before a person enters paradise, they have to submerge inside of a river. And there are three rawayat, Nahr al-Haya, Nahr al-Haya, Nahr al-Haya. Three rawayat, okay, that the river that you must submerge into in order to emerge inside of paradise. Nahr al-Haya, modesty. Natural haya, life, the river of modesty, shyness, the river of life, Nahrul haya, the river of rain, of heavenly rain, and it rains down attributes upon those people who are going to enter into paradise. Okay, so the people of paradise, regardless, regardless, they will enter paradise with have. With a great portion, mashallah ta'ala, of this attribute of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And that's why the Imam, Imam Sheikh Muhammad al-Dasus, he said that the people of paradise will enter paradise with the character of the Prophet Okay, and this one, the insignia, the character of Nabi the character traits of what of shyness. Okay, like everyone inside the paradise resembles the Prophet in terms of his character. So what a blessing from the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is mashallah ta'ala, very important in the way of Rabbaniya is we advance there to here. Yani. Whatever awaits us there, we want a portion of it here. And so quote unquote, if, what, if that shine is that haya is part of the reality of paradise, we bring it forth mashallah ta'ala into this world as the Prophet sallallahu himself did. And that's why here, Sheikh Abdullah Sarajuddin rahimahullah ta'ala, his great shyness, the messenger of Allah sallallahu wa sallam was the shyest of all people because he was the greatest of them in faith. And the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam, wa sallam said, shyness is born of faith. That's in the hadith sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that faith has 60 odd branches. The faith has 70 odd branches, the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam. From the branches, modesty, shyness, the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam says. It's an essential of faith. It's an outcome of faith. When Iman impresses itself upon the heart, there's going to be certain attributes that naturally must ensue. For amongst them, haya. And that's life of the heart. As the Prophet said, the river of modesty, the river of life, the river of shyness, the river of life. The Prophet said, shyness is life. Al haya haya. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like it is life. Bukhari and Muslim narrate that Abu Sa'id al Khudri, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wa sallam, was shyer than the maiden in her chamber. Okay, and here the metaphor, the parallel yeah, being used here, saying that Abu Sa'id al Khudri is a parallel of a woman, yani, of a woman who, like the women of Jannah, untouched. She's untouched by a man. Like women, they're natural loci for things beautiful. One of the most beautiful traits that a woman is a natural loci for is shyness and modesty, okay? In its place. Like we said, mashallah, women present, but they study in who? Study in Nabi. They want to increase in knowledge, to increase in love, to increase in adherence in the Prophet Sallallahu So whatever natural shyness that they have, that Allah Ta'ala blessed them with, they don't allow it to become a barrier to learning. That's why I say, no, whom say, no, Aisha, supreme in shyness, supreme in learning, supreme in love, supreme in imitation. She says in Sahih Bukhari, how beautiful are the women of the Ansar. They're not going to allow their shyness to get away in the way of them understanding the religion. They don't allow it to become a barrier. And so now that, that shyness in its place, you understand when it's appropriate and you understand when it can become inappropriate. That's what Sayyidina Aisha Allah wa Rada'ha is saying. And so that natural loci of shyness and the purest of them, the woman untouched, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, shyer than here, more modest than here, more bashful than here. Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam, how can the Sayyidina Abu Sa'id al Khudri rahimahullah ta'ala says, the narration of what of Bukhari adds, if he dislikes something, it would be seen inside of his face. Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam, that the purity of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam. You know, like they say, like he wears his, his heart upon his sleeve, his heart is in his face. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahibu sallama. You can see all those attributes, those great attributes and perfect attributes orbiting inside of the blessed face of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahibu wa sallama. Akada the Imams rahimahullah ta'ala inform us about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Here, yu'rafi wajhihi. If he dislikes something, it would be seen inside of his face. Sallallahu alayhi wa sahibu wa sallama. Fra'ayt. I saw all of the attributes of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A prophecy inside of the face of the Prophet Zaid bin Su'ina said that. I gazed upon his face, and I know this wasn't the face of a liar. Abdul Salam said that. Abdul Yani, radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa Kayf. This is the Rasul Sayyidi wa sallam. What do you mean by that? This is part of his purity. Yani. It is well known, but it's also part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's concern for the Ummah of the Rasul, particularly the Sahaba. So that there's, a, there's, an, there's an awareness of the Prophet So you can afford the proper respect to the Prophet and the proper reverence, isn't it? Because you can, I, said, oh, I didn't know what, was that, what, was, what you were thinking. I didn't know what was going on inside of your heart. So you see it in his face. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Of the Imams, they say, Shashat al-Haqq, the face of the Prophet. What's Shashat al-Haqq? 
The only that you know what's going on inside of the Prophet Sallallahu you know what's going on with God, yani. Shash al Haq is the screen of God, yani. The face of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, live and direct for those in the presence of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is well known that a maiden who is hidden away in a chamber is especially shy. Yet the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi while Ali was sahih was salama was shyer even than she. Everything about him, the way he dressed, sallallahu alayhi wa sahih was salama, like shyness, bashfulness, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahih was salama. That the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa salama, for the sake of the law, like he had to, just for the sake of the law, only once in his entire life does he expose his hair. Only once does he expose his hair. That did, that did, like a women cover out of modesty, out of shyness. Shuf. The Rasul Sa'ism covers more than women. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa you can choose, subhanAllah, a woman you think is the most shy, the most bashful, the most modest. Shuf, and how she covers, subhanAllah. Shuf, she don't cover like the Nabi. I guarantee you. She don't cover more than the Nabi hatta. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallam. It doesn't matter whether it's at home or abroad, whether it's in private or in public. The Rasul covered. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Doesn't matter whether he's taken ghusl or he's not taken ghusl. The Rasul covered. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Doesn't matter whether the Rasul's intimate with his women or not intimate with his women. He's covered even when he's intimate with his women. The Prophet Sallallahu comes muqanna in the hadith. He comes veiled when he's intimate with his women. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the, the epitome of shyness, the like of which we don't know. You know one of the great teachers of the transmission there, yani, 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 Habib, uh, Abi Muhammad bin Abdullah al Haddar, yani married, any yani of the wives that he married, Shuf, he mentioned that Habib Muhammad never ever saw her hair. That, that was her degree of haya. Like she never uncovered. And yani in private, not one like in public, never in private uncovered, in front of her husband. Why? Because she's shy in front of God, she's modest in front of God. Like she's doing this for God, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not going to change. Since when was Allah not such that you can take off the, the cape of modesty? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you see it with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hakada, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam, unimaginable, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Shyness is a characteristic that leads to the avoidance of shameful matters and prevents any negligence in allotting people their rights. For this reason, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, be shy before Allah as he merits, as is warranted. Yani. The people said, we indeed are shy before Allah. Praise be to him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says, this is not the case. Rather, shyness before Allah entails that you protect the head and that which it contains. And you protect the stomach and that which it contains. As we mentioned before, in the 40, collected a hadith that this narration is a clarification that shyness inspires the one who possesses it to strive for perfection and keeps him from settling for less. The Prophet Sallallahu also said, shyness brings nothing but good. La yati la bi khair. It only brings good. It's an attribute in and of itself. And that's why we embrace it and open arm and we embrace it, mashallah ta'ala. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees Inshallah ta'ala, a great modicum of good. Subhanahu wa ta'ala for each and every single one of us. His shyness was such that he would never confront a person with something that they would dislike. Rather, he وسلم, would hint at the problem or tell one of his companions to address the person directly. Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, and others narrate that Sayyid Anas said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, would never directly confront a person with someone, would never directly confront a person with someone they would dislike. Uh, it's something I should read. That the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would never directly confront a person with something they would dislike. Once they were, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they visited him a man, like a man visited the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with a yellow stain on his clothes. When he stood to leave, the Prophet Sallallahu said to his companions, you mind tell this fellow to wash off this yellow stain. And the Rasul wouldn't do it directly, but had kind of a consideration for the feelings of a person. But the companions can tell him. 
And if you were to dig in deeper, it's not just any companion, a companion that that person would accept it from without offense. Like the Rasul care for you. That's what he calls Jabir al Khawatir. The Rasul always taken the feelings of people into consideration. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. Because what would it mean? How would that bear down upon the heart if the Rasul said, You've got a stain on you? That could break a person's heart. Because what then does the Rasul think of me? What is the Rasul saying about me? How can he come bear, bear down? You know, we, we often mention that tradition of saying a Zahir anhu what is Bedouin. And saying Anas Rahimullah Ta'ala said, Rasulullah kind of you hibbo. The Rasul loved him. And once the Rasul finds him inside the marketplace, and the Rasul comes from behind and thereby will announce to those inside the marketplace of Bakir, of the Deen al Munawara, Man yesh teri hal al abd. Like who's going to buy this slave? The Prophet وسلم, announces inside of, our, inside of the marketplace. And saying, Zahir here, the heart is somewhat broken. Because now he says to the Rasul, he then tejidini kasida, ya Rasulullah. So I'm, I'm just faulty goods. I'm worthless, O Messenger of God. So that you would sell me. You would let me go, O Messenger of God. Yeah, and the point being, look at the, the, the words of the Rasul وسلم, which are words as often on Tibet are words, the Prophet I'm being light, but still even those words, oh, look how they weigh down upon the heart of Sayyidina Zahir, the words of the Rasul. But like in the law, let's still be kasida. With God, you're not worthless. You're, by God, you're not worthless, Yadi. The Prophet says, I'm saying. So the words of the Rasul can bear down. And he knows that all too well, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam. And look at the care and consideration of the Prophet says in that regard. Abu Dawood narrated that Aisha anha wa raha said, if the Messenger of God, sallallahu wa sallam, of Allah, heard something about a man, that the Prophet, sallallahu wa sallam, would not say, what is wrong with so-and-so? But he would say, what is wrong with people that say such and such. And he, um, wa sallam, he makes it generic as much as he can, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that person now is not offended. And then likewise, also from perspective, so people, quote unquote, don't begin to what you ayin. Mm, look at that individual and think ill of that individual. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another example of his shyness, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was when the people sat with him too long after eating. And he was too shy to ask them to leave, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, until a verse of the Quran was revealed. Yeah, and he specifically, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in regarding this, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bukhari, and narrated in his Sahih collection that Anas ibn Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, who's accompanying the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on that particular occasion. And when the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was to marry, and he Zainab, that Umm Sulaim, and he said, Umm Sulaim, the mother of Anas, she says to, he said to me, we should give the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, a gift. And so I agreed. And so she took some dates, butter and cheese, and made haste, haste, okay, in a pot. I mixed them together, which I took to the Prophet. And so the Prophet told me to put it down and then told to invite certain men whom the Prophet named and to invite whoever I met. <clears throat> I did as he bade me. And when I returned, the house was crowded with his relatives, relatives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here, meaning from the Ansar, from Banu Najjar, and the same one, the same um, clan, the same Anas himself is from. And I saw the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam place his hand in the hais, in the dish, and speak into the dish, and then call people 10 at a time to eat from it, saying to them, mention Allah's name, Bismillah, Qul Bismillah, and let each man eat what is nearest to him. They continued until they all had dispersed. Anas was asked as to how many they were present. He replied, around 300. Yani, about 300 miracles of the Prophet. Some of them left, another stayed to talk. That's where the problem now. The problem is those who remain behind. The Prophet is too shy to ask them to leave. But Allah is not too shy. That's why Allah Ta'ala says, Wallah la yastahi min al haq Allah Ta'ala does not have modesty when it comes to truth. Although the rule of the Rasul Sa'ism does. But Allah says, Allah la yastahi min al haq Allah doesn't, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that I attribute the greatness, I am 
modesty, shyness. Remember, it's an attribute of God, the Ali. I said, the Rasul Shashat al Haq is the screen of the divine, the screen of the real, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Prophet says in Tirmidhi, in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi, he says, Inna Allah ta'ala hayyun yuhibbul haya. God is shy and he loves shyness, loves it. And Allah Ta'ala has never seen the like than that which he sees upon Muhammad وسلم, in relation, not just to the quality of shyness, but in relation to all of those qualities. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahihi wa sallam. The Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahihi wa sallam, then he went out Sallallahu wa sallam, and made for the bed chambers. And I went out after him and said, they've gone. The Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa retained and entered the house. Okay, you see the bed chambers. Like, wait, what do you mean the bed chambers? And you know the tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And now he leaves the house, which is the house of Sayyidina Zainab, in the Zainab bin Jahsh, the second of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, bears the name Zainab. And so the Rasul, when these people ain't leaving, the Rasul starts on, where does he go? He leaves, walks through Medina, and I says, I'm with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Where does he go? He goes to Atabata Aisha. He goes to the doorstep of Sayyidina Aisha. So he's just hanging out on the doorstep of Sayyidina Aisha, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he returns back. Sure, they're gone, they're still there. But so he returns back to the doorstep of Aisha, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now goes back to the house of Zainab. They're gone, they're still there. So for the third time that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returns back to the house of Zainab, Aisha, anha wa rdaha. Now they've gone. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Upon that verses will be revealed. So the Prophet returned and entered the house and let down the curtains. I was in the room. The Prophet also recited, Oh, you who believe, do not enter the houses of the Prophet unless permission is granted to you for the meal. And wait, not for its preparation. But if you're invited, enter. And when you've eaten, disperse, lingering not for conversation. This would trouble the Prophet, isn't it? Yeah, he is shy from you. But oh, Allah is not shy from the truth, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this means that because of his generosity, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his karam, akhin kareem, ibn akhin kareem, the Rasul, the most generous of the generous, akram, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was too shy to tell them to leave, whilst they were sitting with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam. Yet Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not shy away from proclaiming the truth that must be honored. Not shy. And then if it was subhanAllah okay, that, that this means that because of his generosity, Sallallahu Alaihi he was too shy to tell them to leave whilst they were sitting with him. But if it was about being with him, you would have left with him. That's the farq between Anas and the rest who remained, isn't it? This is about Ma'iyat al-Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, follow him. When Rasul gets up and leaves the house, leave with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many times do you see that? That should the Rasul sitting with companions, some, something comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so he has to leave. Mm. Companions flow alongside the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That ma'iyat al-Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I say, Imam Malik, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, said, why would you ever turn your face away from him? Like Imam Malik says, why would you ever turn your face away from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Okay, this means he says, that because of his generosity, the Prophet was too shy to tell them to leave whilst they were sitting with him. Yet Allah Ta'ala does not shy away from proclaiming the truth that must be honored. And that truth that must be honored is the truth of Muhammad. And that did just reciprocity. If the Rasul, as mentioned, he takes your feelings into consideration, you shouldn't take his. Now you shouldn't take the feelings of the Rasul into consideration. That there can be a motivating factor for each and every single one of us, isn't it? Because we know, quote, when we act, that the Rasul privy to it. You get the point? Privy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so now, because you say, there'd be something you'd be too shy, too ashamed to do in the presence of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So since when was he absent? Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Since when is he not privy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to our acts? That's a consideration, inshallah ta'ala, yani for each and every. Don't think this is just an issue of the companions themselves. Radiallahu anhum wa rabahum. Then people perfect, yani. Even when mistakes were made, they were quick to rectify. 
even quote unquote, when they were at, they were in a state of disharmony with the Prophet Sallallahu they were quick to reconcile. Radhi Allah Taala anhum yani wardahum. This does not contradict the fact that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is characterized by a generous shyness that is commensurate with His div divinity. Subhana, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, "Your Lord is shy and generous, and when His servant raises his hands to Him, He is shy to refuse Him." The Prophet Hadith in Tirmidhi, the Prophet in the Riwayah that Allah Ta'ala is too shy for a slave to open up his hands. Open up his hands to Allah. And then allow him to walk to retain empty handed. Allah Ta'ala show. Haya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the Hayy subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. He says, because they were sitting in the house, in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, generosity, the Prophet was too shy to be direct with them. However, the situation required clarification. And so the Quran, Allah, brought clarification, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, the scholars have mentioned that there are several types of shyness defined according to its cause. Generous shyness is that which is caused by a generous soul, such as the Prophet Sallallahu shyness when the people sat with him for too long. As we've seen, reverent shyness, when you're shy out of reverence, in that which is caused by recognition of the majesty of the being one is shy of. And the more the Savior knows of his Lord's majesty, the more shy he will be before him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, isn't it? That's why Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, Abu Muhammad al-Ghazali, in his Asrar al-Salah, in the secrets of prayer, he says what the seventh sky of prayer, the ultimate objective in prayer is shyness haya in front of God. That's, you say that's like an objective behind prayer, that you stand in front of God characterized by haya. Because Ali says it's the last, the last of these seven skies, these seven tibaq that characterize the prayer, he says in his ihya, and he radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he wardahu. He says, there is no doubt that the Prophet Sallallahu knew Allah's majesty better than any of his creation. Bukhari and Muslim narrated in their Sahih collections that the Prophet Sallallahu said, by Allah, I am the most knowledgeable of you concerning Allah and the most conscious atqa, taqwa of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Loving shyness, another type, is the shyness of the lover for his beloved. And so that whenever thoughts of the beloved cross his mind, his shyness and concern for him increases and become evident. That's the Prophet Sallallahu Worshipful shyness is a shyness that combines love, fear, and the awareness that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's true rank is far beyond the acts of worship. Yani by means of which the servant draws near to him, isn't it? So that's why you always feel deficient in the presence of the, of the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why in the perfection of your prayer, with all of the haya, you still say upon completion, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. And that there's this, this sense and the unworthiness of anything that you do as it relates to the rights of the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person's shyness from his own self is a shyness that a noble, righteous person possesses. Shyness on account of defects and shameful actions and reliance on others. This person finds that he is shy of his own self, as though he has two souls, one of which is shy of the other. The shyness of decorum is shyness caused by modesty and care to conceal what should be concealed. Ibn Majah anhu, narrated that Bilal ibn Harith who said that when the Prophet Sallallahu wanted to answer the call to nature, he would seek a distant place in which to do so, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that shyness, not just a distant place, then he would seek an object to conceal himself behind, Sallallahu Alaihi that shyness. Tirmidhi and Abu Dawood, the rate of Anas ibn Malik, Rahimullah Ta'ala said that when the Prophet Sallallahu wanted to answer the call to nature, he said would not lift his robe until he was close to the earth, such that none of his aura would manifest, period, even when answering the call to nature. 
And so in the tradition that the aura of the Prophet Sallallahu was never seen, never seen Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not from the shyness of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Now even again our mother, said, the shyness of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi he says, these implied terms, I never saw his aura. Aisha, his wife, never saw her. Yani. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. Ibn Sa'ad narrated that the follower, uh, yani Sa'ad ibn Salih, follower the Tabi'i, student of the Sahaba, said that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi entered the place where he would relieve himself, he would wear his shoes and cover his head. That is Sunnah, isn't it? So that you're protected, but also you're displaying shyness there. Okay? Are becoming covered from head to toe, as they say. Imam Tidhmari, rahimahullah ta'ala, narrated in the Shema'il, that Sayyidina Aisha, radha anha, wardaha, herein he has said, I never looked at or never saw the private parts of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was due to his shyness and his perfect dignity, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his desire to cover himself. Abu Salih narrated on the authority of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, that Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, said, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never approached any of his wives except that he was covered with a cloth draped over his head. And I never saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's private parts, nor he mine. al Bazar rahimahullah ta'ala narrated that Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas and he rahimahullah ta'ala said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would bathe behind the chambers and no one ever saw him naked, ever. In the course of examining all of this, it becomes clear to the peers of intellect that our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam attained the highest rank of shyness and modesty. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a portion of that inshallah ta'ala upon this blessed day, the first of the days of Rabi'ah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to render them containers of truth yani, that all that we do Therein is that which represents and espouses the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahihi wa sallam asking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes our hearts and our minds tender towards the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahihi wa sallam all embracing all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overflows in his creation through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahihi wa sallam that this month inshallah ta'ala becomes a month of an increase in knowledge of the Prophet We sit and we read part of the work of Shaykh Abdullah Sarajuddin. It shouldn't be the only work that we read about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Rabi'a, well, it comes around once in the year. Okay, yes, quote unquote, inside of the month of Ramadan, you read Kalam Allah. The Rabi'a, Kalam Rasulillah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even, quote unquote, you're reading the Quran, you're reading the Quran from the perspective of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself as the one who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ultimately addresses inside of his book, Jalla Jalala Wa Ta'ata Azamatu the Nabi. But we increase the knowledge of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as much as we can. We must quote and quote, we must set knowledge, i.e. reading from this perspective or the Rus from that perspective of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a word, period in life, but especially quote and quote, during, mashallah ta'ala, this month of Rabi' al-Awwal, inshallah ta'ala. We have objectives, objectives to heart. In an age, quote, unquote, to dead hearts, we want the heart to become tender and filled with the love of the Prophet, sallallahu wa such that we've learned how to love him and we espouse nothing but love of him, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahi wa sallam. We're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq. That is clearly one of the signs of tawfiq that Allah ta'ala grants a slave. When Allah ta'ala grants a slave, love yani. Allah Ta'ala, if Allah Ta'ala grants you love, as Allah Ta'ala says, I will grant them wudda. Heck, as Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Taha, the wudda, I will grant them love. That's a sign of tawfiq from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And there's no greater manifestation of wudda, of the wudud, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, than that tijah Rasulullah, than that love that you direct towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The month, inshallah Ta'ala. You know, the, the knowers, they became knowers in this month, the Nabi. The lovers, they become lovers inside of this month of the Nabi. And the, the imitators, they become imitators of the Nabi inside of this month. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahi wa sallam. There's a time for everything. Shuf, I know for us, there's no time like the present. 
And so we just expose ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him to give because that's what he does and that's what he does best subhanahu wa ta'ala to give and to bestow. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.